Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about how to set up and perform a scientific experiment. Whenever you are designing a scientific experiment, you have to keep two different things in mind. That is, what are your groups that you are using in your experiment and what are the variables in your experiment. First, let's talk about the groups. Two different groups in any good experiment. The first one, called the control group, is mainly used for the sake of comparison. That is, comparing the two different groups. The other group in any good scientific experiment is called the experimental group. And this is a critical point. The control group and the experimental group differ by only one variable. If these two groups differ by more than one variable, then the differences between the groups, the outcome of the experiment, you won't know which of the variables is contributing to that difference. That's why it's important that these two groups only differ by one variable. Also critical is something that we know as sample size. Sample size is the number of replicates needed in each group. And in any good scientific experiment, each group will contain at least three replicates. So for example, let's say that you were going to conduct a scientific experiment comparing two different groups of plants. And each of these groups needs to have a minimum of three plants per group. And more than three plants is even better, but at least three. The control group might be three plants that are grown in natural light. The experimental group might be three plants that are grown only in purple wavelength light. In an experiment like this, you are comparing the two groups to determine how the type of light, either natural light or purple wavelength light, how it affects the growth of the plants. Now, with that experiment in mind, let's talk about different variables. The first variable to keep in mind is called the independent variable. The independent variable is the thing that you, the researcher, you, the experimenter, change between these two groups. So the thing that you change. In our example, that's the type of light, either natural light with the control group or the purple wavelength light with the experimental group. Now the next variable to keep in mind is called the dependent variable. The dependent variable is the thing that changes as a result of changing the independent variable. Essentially, the dependent variable is the thing that depends on whatever you have changed, and you can think of it as being what you observe or what you measure. So, for example, in our experiment, if the independent variable is the type of light, natural light or purple wavelength light, then the dependent variable is going to be the amount of plant growth. And you might be looking at a few different metrics. Maybe you're looking at how tall the plants grow, how much mass the plants gain over the, the period of the experiment, um, how many flowers or how much fruit they produce. 
Uh, these are all different things that you could measure and would be different dependent variables. Now remember that with the independent variable, that is what is differing between the groups and there should be only one of those when you've got these two groups. The third type of variable to keep in mind is called the controlled variable. Now, there are a few different names for this, the controlled variable or the control variable, or sometimes just called the controls. And of course, this can be a little confusing when you are also talking about a control group. That's why it's good to always distinguish whether you're talking about the control group or the control variables. Now, the control variables are factors that critically are kept constant. So these are factors in the experiment that are kept constant between the two groups so that they don't affect the results. In our example of different kinds of plant growth conditions, whether natural light for the control group or purple wavelength light for the experimental group, the controlled factors would be things like the amount of water, the type of soil, the length of experiment, uh, the number of hours per day that the plants were in either of the lighting conditions. So these are factors that are kept constant, that are the same for both groups, so that again, the only difference between those groups is the one variable, the thing that you change, the independent variable, so that you can measure what changes as a result, that being the dependent variable. So these are the various things to consider when performing a scientific experiment. If you are interested in learning more about this kind of process and specifically learning more about what is known as the scientific method, then please see my video on that topic. But this is it for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned a lot.